This conference will now be recorded. So now we'll discuss about validations. So validations will be of two types. This is what we have discussed. That is client side as well as the server side. So what is client side and what is server side? So this will be common in any of the technology, not only with Pega. So client side meaning at the design prospect only. So if whatever the what are the details we are entering if that it seems to be accepted before that seems to be validated before clicking on submit button okay so simply to say this before submitting the form and this will be like after clicking on submit button after button okay so the thing here is whatever the data we enter in this form if that has to be validated from the server side we have to go for this kind of validation okay and if everything if any of the data seems to be validated at the section level itself just like email what we are trying to do so if i just give the dummy email id and click on tab out then we'll be getting the validation message on the section level only so let me open that now So if we just check here, what are the data we enter? If we just tab out, we will be getting the error message directly, meaning it is trying to validate from here directly. So these kind of validations, so which seems to be validated before clicking on button clicks, should be considered as an client side validation. Okay, so this will be considered as a client side validation. Now, if I just click on button, form has to be submitted. Now, whatever the data that has been entered, that has to be submitted to the Java server, and Java server has to validate basic things. It has to validate the first name what it is expecting is in the correct format or not so based on the formats it has to just check whether the data that has been submitted is in the correct way or not if it is not the correct way that is expecting it has to throw some error so those kind of validations after it's interacting with the java will be considered as in server side okay so there will be two kinds of validation that is client side as well as the server side so based on the business requirement we have to go for those so in Pega, we'll be, we can able to approach, we can able to uh, achieve these validations by using three rules. That is validate rule, which can be created under process tab and edit validate is of one of the rule, which will can, which can be created under data model. And next thing is constraints. Okay, constraints is the rule which can be uh, created under decision category. Okay. So in Pega, we can able to achieve validations with these three rules. So if we just click on, if we just mouse around this process, we can able to have one rule created for the validate. So this is one rule. And similarly, there will be another rule for edit validate. So this is the one. And we can able to do the same using constraints also. So under decision, there will be something called constraints. So ultimately, the purpose of these rules is to show some error messages. Okay. To show, to show some error messages only, we'll be going for this validate rule. And we can able to achieve the same using activities also. So using activities also, I can able to show some error messages using like property set message or page set messages or property validate or page validate. So there will be some kind of there will be some kind of uh, well uh, methods using which we can able to perform the same. So wherever we can able to avoid activities, we have to do that, right? So that is the reason in this case, we will be going for validate rule. Instead of going for activities, we'll be going for validate rules. And first let us discuss about this one. Okay, so validate rule. So this rule will be completely like a server side validation. So what are the validations we're trying to achieve using this validate rule will be completely server side. Meaning on entering the data here, it will not be validating anything. Suppose if I'm entering some incorrect data also, it will not be throwing any error unless we click on submit button. So if we click on submit button only, the data has to be posted to the server and it has to be throwing some validation errors. So this is purely server side validation. What are the thing we're trying to achieve this rule will be like in server side. And this will be like an instance of rule OBJ validate. So all the rules will be like an instance of this class that is rule OBJ validate. Okay, and validations achieved, achieved using edit validate will be client side. 
so mostly people will be thinking that this is this acts like an only client side but we can able to make this to work like an server side also but most of the people doesn't know this even in the interviews also if we just say client side validation will be acting like an sorry edit validate will be acting like an client client side even they will be considering this as a correct statement there will be one thing where we can able to make this to be acting like in server side also that most of the people doesn't know and declare constraint this is also completely client side okay so here we can able to achieve with three rules that is validate which is an instance of rule obj validate and this is completely server side validation and there will be something like edit validate rule which can be created under data model and this will be acting like an client side as well as the server side mostly we will be using this for client side only okay and this is an instance of rule edit validate and there will be another rule also that is declare uh, constraints and this will be acting like a client side okay so now we'll just work on one by one so we'll be taking this validate rule so use i can able to call this validate rule from many places so on button click we have to run this validations right so on button click what are the data that we are that we want to validate that has to be done on click of button meaning i can able to call this particular validate rule on this section submit so to be more technical section will not be submitted flow action will be submitted once flow action is getting submitted section and all the things will be getting submitted so based on this we can able to understand this is like an server side and this should be called on button click meaning that is submitting of flow action so validate rule can be called from flow actions that is one place and similarly i can able to call this validate rule from activities also okay this validate rule can be called using activities also that is using obj validate so this is one of the method name where we can able to validate the uh, properties with this rule okay so if we just click on button and if we want to run one validate rule and just check for all the validations we can able to go this approach and other thing we can able to call this validate rule from another validate rule also if i just create one validate rule there will be option for me to select another validate rule also. so these are all the things so using validate rule we can able to go for this approach and in the real time mostly this will be used mostly 90 percent of the cases these will be used i'll tell you why we why the other things will be given less preference so based on the business requirement we'll, we have to go for this also that is not the big thing but mostly they will be going for this one okay so now we'll see how to create one validate rule and how to apply the basic validations okay so now let us work on one small requirement that is first name and last name should be mandatory that is one thing and last name should not be equal to first name okay so during real time also first name whatever the value he is entering the same value should not be there in the last name also so that is the validation what we want to check if he's entering both the values and clicking on submit button we have to throw one error at the last name not at the first name so at the last name we have to throw one error saying like last name should not be equal to first name so that is my requirement okay and next thing is we have to accept only the customers who are of age between 18 to 60 let us say 18 to 60 only i want to make them insured with our organization so below 18 minor should not be acceptable and above 60 senior citizen should not be allowed so this thing we have to check if it is 18 or if it is 60 and between any number this has to be considered so no validation no error message had, has to be displayed now okay so these are all things we'll work on So we have not kept anything like mobile number huh? so here we have so for phone number so rest all things it's okay for phone number we should be having only 10 digits okay so if he's entering either nine digits or the 11 digits that count should be displayed okay mobile number should be valid so that thing will work on mobile number should be equal to 10 digits so this is our requirement and this has to be validated on clicking on submit button so for that what we can able to do we can able to create one validate rule and we can able to call this validate rule from the flow action so this is our approach so first let me show you how to create one validate rule and in that how to define each and every condition okay so clear so far 
Any doubts, Tulani, Uma? Yes, Chandra. Uma, you also know? No, uh, yeah, I'm okay. So I'm trying to create one validate rule. It will be created under process category. So okay. process and it will be like in validate. Select the validate rule. Giving something like validate custody details. And we want to use it in the framework context. So create and open. So this is how our validate rule will be looking like. Here we have to add multiple function, sorry, properties. Why? Because I want to just go for this. I mean, this will be acting like in server side validation, right? Server side validation meaning on clicking on submit button. So if we just click on submit button, what are all the properties I'm trying to add the conditions here? Those are to be submitted. So finally, validate rule will be validating for multiple properties. Whereas other validate, sorry, other edit validate. So those will not be given like given a chance to validate with multiple properties at a time. So for each and every property, there should be one separate rule. But here in this validate rule, I can able to validate for multiple properties at a time. So that is one advantage here. Our first requirement here is first name and last name should be mandatory. So this can be directly done from here only. So for each and every control. So let me take live UI. For each and every control, if we just to open this, I can able to directly open it from here and make changes. No? So if I open it directly from here, there will be something called required. Okay. So if we just make it as an always, if you, if you just make it as an always, it will be marking. So there is no save option enabled, meaning it's in it's in the checkout stage. It's in the private edit. Okay. So this has been checked out by this another operator. Okay, for the testing purpose, we can able to go for this private edit now. So click on private edit. And open this control and there will be something called required as always. So I'm selecting automatically we should be getting the red color symbol here. Okay, and for this also I want to make this mandatory. So required always submit this. So our first requirement is completed. Second thing is I want to make last name is not equal to first name so if the user is entering first name and last name same i have to display some error message on to the last name property okay not on the first name first name can be anything based on the first name value i want to compare it with the last name so that is the reason i want to include one property where i want to show the error message so for that i am trying to include that last name property it will be like customer details dot 